Hi everyone, my name's Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Forum Live. Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight every Friday live from East London. Today we're joined by Point Blank instructor Dan Herbert to take a look at what's new in the long-awaited update for NI's reactor. So today is all about Reactor 6 and sound design, but if you want to master Reactor and synthesis in general, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklondon.com and make sure you subscribe to our channel using the button below this video. And remember, we are completely live, so get your questions in for Dan and we'll get to them at the end of the broadcast. Dan, welcome back to FFL. Well, thank you very much. We've been waiting a long time for Reactor 6. It has been a long time. It has. Feels like a long time. What, 10 years now? Yeah, something like that. We've been stuck on version 5 yeah. for quite and there's been some incremental updates. I mean, before we get into what exactly is new in Reactor 6, could you just explain what Reactor is for anyone who doesn't know? Yeah, Re Reactor is this kind of um, framework, really. Uh, it's a modular synthesis environment for building stuff. Um, now, when it first came out back in the late 90s, um, there's a kind of previous version before that, uh, it came stacked with a whole load of, I suppose, crazy synths. Um, and awesome kind of sound design potential. Um, and so the synths could be actual normal synthesizers, yeah. or they could be kind of groove boxes um, or effects. Uh, basically, anything you can think of related to audio, Reactor could actually uh, create it. Um, so as I said, it came supplied with ensembles. Now, this word ensemble uh, crops up all the time. Basically, it's a synthesizer, but as I said, it could be a groove box, could be an effects, um, whatever it is. But that's their terminology. And there's quite a lot of, lot of terminology uh, related to Reactor. So it kind of encom encompasses all those different things. Okay. And a lot of the synths that they've been bringing out recently have been built in Reactor, like Monarch. Anyone has used Monarch or the mouth or razor. Yeah, razor as well, no, and it? rounds and molecular. Yeah. Um, and I mean, on their own, there's really exciting synthesizers, which sound brilliant. And that's one of the things I think puts Reactor apart from other kind of modular synthesis environments. Out there is the sound of it, the sound of its oscillators, the sound of its filters. Um, the way thing way it's kind of going and making it easier to program in. I mean, there's other software out like the Max for Live uh, yeah. and Max, as well as other environments as well. But the sound of Reactor is actually better. Cool. Um, things like filters. So, what's new in Reactor Six then? Um, right, what's new in it? The actual layout is pretty much the same. They've certainly been uh, working hard to kind of improve the look uh, of the interface. Um, now, the, probably the main um, introduction is blocks, which everyone uh, probably knows about. Um, and that's essentially, it's kind of building on um, this whole concept of a framework. Now, if you've ever tried to program in Reactor before, uh, and certainly some of our students on the sound design course find it, um, it's pretty full on, and there's lots of little kind of quirks in it. It's certainly possible to create um, your own synths, but you have to learn a fair amount. So there's a kind of slight steep learning curve. However, Reactor Blocks has kind of leveled that out slightly and has put everything together very much like a kind of hardware synth, um, a modular synth, and has provided us with really small building blocks, so just a self-contained oscillator, a self-contained envelope and amp section, and things like that. So it really simplifies it down. So if you've ever tried programming in Reactor before and found it just a bit of a turn-off, blocks is actually awesome um, because it does completely simplify it. As long as you've got uh, a basic knowledge of modular synthesis and the kind of terminology, um, it's kind of changed it and put it all onto a level playing field. So. Here, for example, on my screen, um, I've got a split screen here. You can see the panel at the top, okay? And then lower down, this is what's known as the structure view. And you've got all these little blocks here, uh, the kind of, hence the term blocks, uh, which are kind of building blocks. So we've got an oscillator. So for each of these blocks, you've got a corresponding panel in the screen above. Now, the great thing about using blocks and Reactor in general is you don't ever have to see the structure view. You could just use it as a good quality synth, okay, with some awesome sounds. But if you're so inclined and want to kind of explore sound design or 
I mean, I'm mentioning sound design, but actually it's not limited to sound design in any way. It might be you're considering setting up some kind of live rig. Um, you could build your own set by connecting these blocks together. So it comes with sequences uh, as well. So the power behind modular synthesis is you can design whatever you want to create. So you're not limited um, by, I don't know, if you buy a certain third party synth, it only does one type of synthesis. With blocks, you can make new types of synthesis. You can, if you want to have 20 oscillators stacked up and your CPU uh, is powerful enough, then you can do that. Uh, and it gives you that kind of flexibility. Equally, if you want to kind of really create complex um, kind of patterns, which constantly kind of going out of time and then back into time, um, again, you can really do that easily just by kind of stacking sequences together and get them to trigger. So that's kind of fundamentally uh, what Blocks is about. Certainly when you get it up and running, what I'd really encourage you to do is check out some of the uh, actual provided snapshots. So again, snapshots is another kind of term from Reactor, basically presets. Um, so I'll just load it up here to start with Monarch Micro. Um, which is based on the Monarch synth, obviously. So it's obviously, what we've got here is a couple of oscillators, uh, an envelope, two envelopes, and a filter. Okay, and then a reverb unit here from rounds. So again, this is another thing I really like about this whole concept of blocks, is it's kind of minimizing the kind of complexity. So if you've ever checked out the Reactor Factory library, some of the synths within there are awesome, but they're just massive and it takes a, a while to learn all the various different parameters. Here we're deal, dealing with small building blocks, which you can just drop in. And if a new one comes on, come along, then you can learn that quite simply and then again, drop it in. Uh, and I should kind of mention as well, the uh, Reactor user library. Um, Cause one of the exciting things about this development is they've simplified it the actual development part of it um, and really improved uh, the information available for how to build your own block, essentially. Um, so what people can do with the Reactor user library is basically load up, create a block uh, and then load that up and you can just download it and use it for free. Um, and interestingly, uh, in the past, anyone who's created quite an interesting ensemble, um, Reactor have then taken those on and developed them up into actual fully fledged product products. So again, it's a kind of exciting area for mm. developers out there um, to get their work out there. Um, and yeah, in, in some ways, when you play with it on this release, you, you start to feel like, actually, I want this and this, and I can see people jumping in and creating those and then releases later down the road, those will be included in the actual whole package. So it's uh, yeah, quite an exciting uh, development. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is just uh, Mo Monarch Micro. In terms of if you want to go through the different snapshots or presets, uh, you've got uh, in this kind of browser window on the left hand side, uh, the little um, magnifying glass there is the browser icon or the little camera is the icon is the snapshots or presets. So you can just click on wh whichever one you want. Monarch design. It does indeed, <laughs> um, based on uh, Mini Moog. Yeah. And um, again, they do put a lot of effort into modeling the synths they're trying to emulate. Uh, obviously for legal reasons, they're not, to, not allowed to say what synth they may be uh, emulating, but yeah, sounds fantastic. Okay, so do check out the various different kind of ensembles which come um, with blocks, but really the power behind it and what gets me excited about this is how easy it is to actually program your own synth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a brand new uh, empty uh, blocks. Uh, now that wasn't wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> ah, I'll tell you why. I need to be in edit mode, which is always a help when it comes to <laughs> uh, editing because I want to be in library. So if I double click on reactor blocks here. We've got a list coming down and in the lower pane here, it says blocks new. So I'm just gonna double click on that. And that's gonna create a brand new page with just some default blocks in there. So clock is basically like your sequencer. And then we've got note in, 
which is going to be the input, MIDI input essentially from the keyboard. And then we've just got a standard stereo output fader so we can adjust the volume. Everything else we need to add in to actually get sound out. Now, I suppose the main difference between blocks and previous programming in Reactor um, is blocks is always active. It's running at an audio rate, okay? So there's no difference between event signals and audio signals. It's all audio and that's exactly how if you ever played with uh, a modular synth, perhaps you played with Eurorack or some of the synths from the 70s like System 100s, uh, essentially you just get a cable, connect it up and flying down that cable is a voltage. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're controlling pitch or modulating filter uh, what it, or an audio signal, it's just a varying voltage. And it's exactly the same when it comes to blocks. Uh, it's a digital signal, but the cables are all going down the wires is exactly the same signal. So let's just connect up an oscillator. And as I said, it's running all the time. It's not obvious it is, but if I drop in this oscillator and connect it up to my output, probably a low sound. 25 hertz. There you go. Well, that's... My favorite. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So that's uh, kind of higher uh, in the register now. So. If we want to, if we want to do Hertz, we're actually on keyboard tracking, we can just click on this key tracking here and you can dial whatever frequency you want and just listen and uh, chill out and vibe out on that frequency. <laughs> <Done>. <laughs> Our synth is done. Exactly. So if you're into a bit of minimal <laughs> Lamont Young, uh, hey, we're up and running. However, if you want to kind of play it and play a little tune, then we can just grab, here's the note in utility. So you're constantly kind of flicking between the two windows, between the panel and between the structure view. I can grab the pitch and connect it into the pitch inlet. Let's turn key tracking back on. And then we can play a lovely little tune. Now, let me just stop Reactor. You might notice that sound is going constantly. That's because we need to add in something like uh, an amp and an amp envelope to actually control the volume so it only turns on when we play a note. But this is the crazy thing, you don't have to do that. You can just have a patch which makes sound all the time um, and create actually quite complex patches which do that or actually get patches which don't use the keyboard at all. I've found it's actually really use useful to have a keyboard control in some way. Um, so let's just set this up, uh, a basic patch here where we trigger um, an envelope from the actual keyboard. So I'm just gonna drag in the ADSR. Now again, you can drag in either straight into the panel view, I'd recommend that, or you can drag into the actual structure view. So let's drop in an AMP VCA. The reason I recommend dragging into the panel view is because Reactor will plonk your panel somewhere where you don't want it when dragging into the structure view. Anyway, uh, so here's the VCA. So it's all about kind of following your signal flow and thinking about how you want to control the sound. So from, this is my oscillator, that's what makes the sound. So I'm just gonna connect it through VCA, the out of the VCA to the input here of my stereo fader. Okay, uh, let's just turn reactor on again. Uh, Command R, really useful shortcut for when you're programming. If I turn up the volume, you can hear it. But what I want to do is be able to play that keyboard and for it to open up the um, VCA. So we've also got, we've got pitch, uh, which is, as you know, um, in terms of MIDI goes between zero and 127. When it comes to blocks, it actually limits it down between zero and one. What's also quite interesting is how they've now divided it up. Uh, instead of going 127, it's 120. So what that means is you get over zero to one, you get uh, 12 octaves, okay, sorry, 10 octaves, all equally divided up, okay, and that loosely equates to one volt per octave, so for those who are kind of familiar with... Uh, Classic CV. Exactly. Um, it kind of fits with that. Uh, and interestingly, you can actually, if you've got the right audio interface, it is possible to interface uh, blocks with other uh, modular synths. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Okay, as long as they, again, correlate to the uh, one volt. You might have to do some uh, calibration or some scaling if not. Mm. Okay, so uh, gate signal. Um, so again, this is kind of terminology which uh, stem from early analog synths and gate signal we can think of like velocity. Uh, and it's basically kind of on off type of information, but 
as you can, depending on how hard you hit your key, is it will vary again from between zero and one. Right, let's get this ADSR and connect it up, the out of the ADSR into, I'm gonna connect into the Mod A inlet here of the VCA. So most of these modules, uh, sorry, these blocks I should say, have a mod A and mod B inlet, and that's for modulation capabilities, okay? It'd be great if there were more of them. There's ways around it, okay? We can mix modulation sources together, and we'll certainly check that out uh, in a minute. So I've connected that up, play my keyboard, nothing's happening. But, interestingly, we can see a flashy light. We like flashy lights. Again, it wasn't we something do. which was uh, common on the old synths, um, and there'd be a lot of head scratching but I can see a flashy light, so I know that's working. To actually assign that envelope to the level, I click on A, and then you get these little kind of greyed out faders appearing next to anything which can be modulated. And these are well worth checking out. So just click on A, and then you can see what you could modulate within any of the blocks, okay? So uh, I've just moved that up, uh, so it'll be a positive modulation. If you move it downwards, then it'll be a negative modulation. Well, he. It's worked, amazing. So uh, here on the envelope, we could slow slow the attack up. Okay, or we can make little blippy sounds or whatever we want to make. So our basic patch is up and running. So that's your kind of basic uh, patch. What you can then do is kind of continue to duplicate that. So I suppose I should take uh, a little look at this kind of oscillator. So you'll actually find a number of different oscillators um, within the different categories. So Bento Box uh, has got about eight different blocks in, um, and it's got one oscillator. Uh, and this oscillator, you can kind of go through the different waveforms. If I uh, put my envelope back to something more useful. Okay, so it starts on a, off on a sine wave, then kind of interpolates into a triangle wave, morphs, I should say into a saw wave and then into a pulse wave. Okay, now, remember what I was saying about modulation capabilities. If I click on this A button, it, it shows you that actually you can modulate all of these. And this is where blocks becomes really, really exciting because you can start to create new forms of synthesis that you wouldn't necessarily have thought about. So we could, for example, module, uh, modulate the kind of waveform uh, in a specific way. So, other ways we could control it, if you want to use your MIDI controller, uh, you can just right click or control click MIDI OSC learn, waggle the control and now simply got my MIDI controller assigned to the waveform. So depending on what you're creating, what you want to set up, uh, it's actually quite quick and flexible and that's that's one of the reasons uh, I'm quite liking this. Can you this. record that um, MIDI information? Yeah, into in your okay. in, uh, in standalone, not easily. Okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there's always a way. There's always a way, and yeah. it involves getting tables set up and right, stuff we like won't that. We not go into that, but yeah. No, uh, but if you want to kind of record in that information, yeah, then that would be up. a cool thing because you know a machine the way you can like quickly click on the outside of the knob, move it, and then it records and loops it. That'd yeah, be yeah. really nice. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's one thing I, I didn't talk about in uh, the overview is I'm running this in standalone. But obviously you can run it in your DAW as a VST or AU uh, plugin. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that's more efficient depending on what you're trying to create and uh, how you're trying to actually use it. Um, good, so it might be you want to kind of add a filter to this setup. Um, what I would say whenever you're creating stuff is try uh, and be quite neat when you're programming and get into the habit of naming uh, your blocks as you're dropping them in. So I'd started explaining about these different categories here. Um, so in Boutique, for example, you've got a couple of oscillators uh, and different filters, okay? So it's worth, again, checking these out. Monarch, for example, it's got some really nice sounding filters in. So anyway, let's just drop in uh, this filter here. Connect him up. So signal flow from the, it doesn't really matter where I put my filter. Typically, where we'd stick it is after the oscillator and then out of that into the VCA. Okay, if I want to have another envelope for my filter, I can. So I can just duplicate, Command D is the shortcut. And as I said, get in the habit of naming, because it does get very confusing if you don't name, as we'll see when we uh, create some more oscillators. So uh, that's another envelope. We can stick that into mod A source. 
can see that flashing. So to assign it to the cutoff. Now it's not particularly exciting to uh, kind of filter a sine wave. There we go, here's my filter envelope, so I've labelled it here. So let's pull down the... Uh... Yep, yeah, got a kind of typical plucky sound, where we just bring that sustain level down for your filter envelope. So again, another kind of standard building block. And that's the kind of good way to start. And once you've got the... Um, your kind of basic structure, then you can kind of easily copy it and make it more complex. So like I said, there's actually quite a few um, oscillators to choose from and they sound good. You can obviously just duplicate the same one, but why not check out, I don't know, something like the multi-wave oscillator, let's drop this in, and they'll have a different amount of inputs on it. Now, another thing I should uh, say, you've got a little info button, which you find up in the top right-hand corner here. Now, this is really handy. If you don't really know um, about synthesis, it will probably give you a good indication of what the parameters do and also what the blocks do as well. So if you hover your mouse over the header, it gives you, I don't know if you can see the writing there, it's very, very small, it gives you an explanation about what that oscillator is about or what this parameter here, what does the FM uh, control do or the sync uh, control. Okay, so it's really, really handy. Similarly, as you hover it over uh, an inlet in the structure view, it will also give you a brief explanation of how that could be useful to you. Anyway, I want to patch in this um, oscillator, so going from the pitch into this one now. If I try and connect the output into my filter, it then disconnects the other oscillator, which is irritating to say the least. So what we actually need to do is we need to mix these together. Um, so there's a couple of different mixers. I'm just going to use um, the one from Bento Box. And let's move it over here. So from the output, I'm going to go to in one there. And again, this is where it can be handy to actually na uh, name your oscillators with whatever number inlet is going in. So one Bento Box. There we go, to a boutique multi-wave, which looks kind of similar to uh, a Juno 106. Um, another thing I found quite useful when you're setting up complex uh, patches is actually make use of these hints. So you're saying about this information button. Uh, well, at its default, it just says level one. Well, if you're creating quite a complex synth with lots of these mixers, it, even if you kind of align them, it can get quite confusing, uh, especially if it's been a bit of time before you created it and then come back to it. So what you can actually do is call up uh, properties, okay, and then we can type in here where the actual signal is coming from. So uh, bento osc, and then now if I hover my mouse over it, it's, uh, it's kind of taken over. Get off. <laughs> it's, uh, what's it doing? What are you doing? Oh, I love it when it does things like this. Just to embarrass me, you see. <laughs> oh, I turn hints back on. Info's off, yeah. There yeah, there we go. So now I hover it over and uh, it says Bento Osc and we can do the same uh, for the controller too, to say multi-wave Osc. And it's just a real handy hint especially when you're creating complex patches might, where you might have loads of these. Anyway, uh, let's set the envelopes to something, again, more useful. Okay, so we're now basically mixing our sources together. Ah, uh, tell you what. I can't hear any difference, and that's because you need to plug the output <laughs> I was thinking. to the input. Uh, it's just as well I didn't say, that sounds better, doesn't it? So uh, <laughs> there we go. that's good, because I was looking, going, hang on, it can't possibly be 31, right? Let's just set that to zero. There we go, that's better. Okay, so this is the kind of whole principle, if you want to create stacked synthesizer with a load of oscillators, just get a mixer up there, and then we can start detuning. Uh, or going for really kind of fat sounds. Okay, and we can then add more oscillators on. Uh, you can have up on a single mixer, you can have four inputs, and obviously the more inputs you want, 
the more mixers you'll actually use. Okay. Uh, if you hit on the actual number, that works like a kind of mute function, uh, which is actually quite useful. Also, it's quite useful. You can modulate any of these uh, controls as well, or like I showed you before, you can set up your MIDI controller uh, and assign that to, um, so you've got, if you've got sliders there, you can then create your own synth, essentially, um, and control that uh, from your MIDI keyboard. Okay, good. So that's how we can kind of add more oscillators. Now, uh, the kind of interesting thing is about modulation. There's loads of different ways we can modulate. As I said, there's only two uh, mod inputs, mod A and mod B, but we've also got the ability to mix together modulation sources. Now, I am talking about a modulation source, but the great thing about blocks is you're not limited to just using an LFO or an envelope as a modulation yeah. source. You can use absolutely anything, because uh, all the outputs and inlets interconnect, okay? <laughs> you might find they don't do much, you have to choose your inlets correctly, but uh, let's say, for example, we want to create a kind of sequence pattern. Um, what we can do, drop in a sequencer, okay? So, eight-step sequencer, um, which typically we'd use to create some form of sequenced pattern. Um, so, in fact, why not set this up? Um, so I'm going to connect the pitch in there. Got a gate input, and we can use the utility, the clock source, to trigger that. And that's what's going to kind of cause the step sequencer to move. So uh, to get the clock source working, just press play. Okay, if you're syncing externally, you'll need to make sure reactor's actually in play. Uh, all depends on your settings here. But you can now see it moving through. We can't hear any sound because I haven't actually patched this in yet. So if we want to get a kind of chugging pattern, wherever the pitch was going, we're going to connect that through. Equally, wherever the gate signal was going, we need to connect that up to the gate. It's exciting at the moment. You feeling excited, Declan? I'm feeling this track. Yeah, it's, going, it's going well, isn't it? Yeah. So, we're up and running. We've got our step sequencer. Now, like I said, we can use that to trigger notes, but the cool thing is you're not limited to just triggering notes. We've got the kind of velocity window that, uh, settings down here, these numbers. Um, so actually, we could route velocity, let's say, to filter cutoff or something like that. Uh, so here's my velocity output from the step sequencer. Go into mod B on my filter. Find my filter. Here we are. Modulation B. I'm just going to take uh, mod A off for the moment. And depending on the setting here, let's give it a little bit of resonance to make it a bit more obvious as well. So basically our step sequencer is now modulating that cutoff. Okay, the lower these numbers, yep, the lower the actual uh, cutoff. Good. Now, here's another kind of exciting thing about it. Let me just turn uh, reactor off for the moment. Uh, is we can then use a step, another step sequencer or an LFO, whatever it may be, to then actually control the step sequencer. Uh, and this is the great thing about modular synthesis. You can build a little system and then bolt on another system on, on it to kind of keep varying it. So you end up with constantly varying patterns. So if I, uh, I'm just going to use a couple of uh, extra modules here. Uh, it's come down to utility. Uh, so one in here cool. Uh, I might be lying about utility. Uh, Digilog, sequence clock divider. What this essentially allows you to do is divide up your kind of main sequencing clock, okay, uh, up into smaller amounts and get kind of quite complex patterns. Uh, whack that in there, and let's create another sequencer so I can just duplicate that. Uh, gate into there. So here's my kind of clock divide, and what I'm going to do is just connect the, let's go from the um, velocity output of this sequencer, I'm going to go into the mod A inlet of this one. Now, again, this is where you want to get in the habit of naming stuff. So this is my mod sequencer, okay? Otherwise, everything looks the same and it gets really confusing. Uh, so what I want to do is just vary, uh, let's say, the amount of steps um, of my main sequencer using this other sequencer, okay? so. Uh, here's my mod sequencer. So this is the main one. I've gone into, if 
I just turn reactor back on. You can see I've got modulation source. And if you look here, no hands, it's now modulating the amount of steps of that sequencer. And this is the great thing because essentially the potential here is limitless. Yeah. Um, we can set it up in so many different ways. We can randomize it, correct, make it kind of generate new ideas for you. Yeah, um, and there's also, I mean, we looked at reverb from rounds earlier. There's other effects panels as well, isn't there? Uh, there's uh, rounds delay as okay. well. There's also a driver where you've got uh, distortion, distortion yeah. uh, pretty cool distortion. Uh, and then and you that. can sequence the effects as well. And yeah, Absolutely everything. Yeah. And so that's yeah, what, I mean, we could talk about this all day. I'm sure we will after the broadcast. Well, we could do a whole course we could, just exactly. on blocks. <laughs> nice plug. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a couple of questions here um, from guys on YouTube. Um, Caitlin Nicole says, thanks for the great FFL. You are welcome. Uh, can you please talk about our polyphony in blocks? And there's been a couple of questions about polyphony in blocks. Yep. And people might be disappointed, right? Uh, well, they might be disappointed to start with. So basically, blocks is monophonic. monophonic yes. But actually, if you get any... Uh, modular system, uh, analog system, they are monophonic, um, but it sounds fantastic. However, it, it, obviously, uh, like I was showing you, it's possible to stack up oscillators and actually play back uh, a polyphonic chord yeah. because you tune them in that way. But in terms of playing chords from your keyboard at the moment, uh, it's not possible. However, if you're good at programming in Reactor, I'm sure it is possible to make them uh, polyphonic. Yeah, you find a way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, while one just says, I have no idea how to use Reactor. Well, hopefully you do now. Um, David Bora is asking, uh, can you design your own interface with custom 3D buttons, etc.? Have they improved that aspect? They have improved that aspect. In terms of 3D buttons, uh, I'm not sure. If you designed um, it, maybe in Photoshop, and then dropped it in as like a JPEG or something. Well, you could always yeah. do that with the original Reactor anyway, yeah. design in another um, program. And it was a right pain, because you had to get uh, the angles all right and stuff like that. They have improved that, and there's kind of um, default um, customized in Corsell now, which is great. Again, check out the basic tutorial on that. The other thing which is really, really great, and it's taken so long to do, is they've actually, you can now change the font and color and size of text, which may, may seem like a small thing, but it's brilliant. Yeah. Because before, if you wanted to do anything cool, uh, you'd have to create it in another program okay. and import and it as a background. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 32 Stevitz asks, have they balanced the CPU load issue? Reactor 5 used to push CPU really hard, clipping some of the bigger synths. Um, I guess you're always going to have CPU issues with a synth like this. There's always going to be CPU issues. Um, but uh, yeah, it's one of those things uh, I've got in the... How have you found Reactor 6 for CPU? Uh, <laughs> pretty similar to Reactor 5, <laughs> really. Uh, yeah, as soon as you... Uh, there's certainly some blocks which are greedier than others, and you yeah. see a percentage just jump right up. Um, anything which sounds good, and has been built really well, it's going to use up CPU. There's no getting away from it. Um, and I'd much prefer something to sound good than not so good uh, yeah. and then be really efficient. Um, I mean, I've learned to live with Reactor and end up bouncing a lot of stuff down, uh, which kind of harks back to the old days of printing stuff to tape. Yeah. But it's obviously, uh, well, it can be much quicker. Yeah. OK, cool. Um, Marcus Corbridge is asking, can you, we were kind of talking about this before, can you route blocks to control external hardware since or Euro rack modules and vice versa? You can indeed. Um, and that's potentially an exciting use of it. Um, you'll need a dedicated audio interface. Uh, it needs to be capable of running kind of DCs. So often um, interfaces get rid of any DC offset, which is like a really low high pass filter essentially. Um, so there's a few out there which allow you to do it. I, I think, think Mo2 wants to do yeah. Mo2, I think there's something called Express as well. Um, Maybe someone will make a dedicated Reactor 6. Well, and perhaps sync. native instruments for kind of bring a breakout box for awesome, it. it? Um, yeah. So, I mean, then, then you can combine the be best of both yeah. worlds. I mean, there's, is it Expert Sleepers? Yes. They, they, I think they make a yep. rack modules. Maybe it'll work with that too. Yeah, yeah, Cool. We'll have to try that soon. Um, yeah, more questions about polyphony, but yeah, unfortunately, it's just monophonic. David Boyer is asking, is there a four-pole filter to simulate the Moog? Uh, well, Monarch, yeah. uh, so Monarch is based on, yeah, the Mini Moog. Yeah. 
And uh, one more from John Reed is, what's the learning curve like on Reactor 6? Well, it's certainly been helped by blocks. Well, it depends what you want to do in Reactor 6, really. Yeah. Uh, it's much better than previous versions of Reactor if you want to get into blocks. Um, I, yeah, I th it's going to be great. I haven't yet taught any students blocks, but in yeah. comparison to uh, what we've been used to, it's going to be great. And uh, yeah, because we'll be able to focus on the really cool stuff of uh, designing sounds and creating quite crazy textures and stuff rather than learning about all the quirks which you need yeah. to know about. And uh, 30, 32 Stevitz has actually clarified that, so that was my fault. It was multi-core issue where CPU 1 was hit really hard by Reactor 5, leaving the other three cores almost unused. unused so yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That's uh, still the case. I don't know. I don't think okay. they've done anything about it. Uh, okay. There's certainly nothing in their literature suggesting they have. Uh, okay. And that's why sometimes if you use it in a DAW, as separate instances, it's sometimes more efficient. Ah, oh, okay, because the DEW splits it over the course. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Hot tip. So anyway, uh, unfortunately we are out of time for today's FFL. If you want to see and learn more about Reactor, our sound design module and our diploma courses covers it at synthesis and a lot more. So check that out at pointblanklondon.com and we'll be back next week for another FFL. We'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs>